May our Father, Messiah, and Holy Spirit be with us. So this should be a quick video, um, unless, you know, Father, Messiah, and Holy Spirit will it be longer. But I have things written down here that I'm just going to discuss on the video. Who do we follow? Should we follow men? Should we follow women? Literally clicking that button on social media as I did so many times before. Father Messiah, please forgive me. Following woman when I had a woman. And it's like, you're just telling yourself, like, you know, you have a woman. You're feeling as though, like, yeah, you know, like, you're just, it's just the unholy spirit. Like, I can't even explain it, you know. Like, it's, it's like, I feel like how the Holy Spirit utters things that just can't be uttered. The unholy spirit is the same thing, but in a disgusting way. You know, because it's like in a lustful way, you know, it's like you're just following and you're like, you know, I'm just following a woman or whatever. But at the same time, you know what you're doing. You know, you know you're doing this for lustful reasons. You know, you're doing this not for a righteous reason, because why am I following a woman when I have a woman? There's no there's no type of way to even explain that. You know, if you feel like you can explain that in a righteous way, explain that to me. You can't explain that if you have a man and you're following other men. And this is not for business. This is not for nothing. You're just clicking that button. It's because you're you're attracted to them. You, you know you're lusting over them. It's not it's not a righteous reason. It's not a righteous reason. Word. It's just it's just sad. You know. Word. I even did these things as I was with my woman. She even spoke to me about this before as well. Before I fully accepted my own mantle and began to follow my side, which is really sad for her. So who do we follow? Stop following lust to the lake of fire. Stop following money to the leg of fire. Some people will maybe follow somebody just because they got a lot of money and they just want to look at money, money, money. I remember I was doing it with my mans for a point in time. We're like, we're just going to follow people who are, quote unquote, successful in this world. <laughs> nah, I don't, want, I don't want success in this world. That's just going to lead you to the leg of fire. <laughs> Stop following soothsayers to the leg of fire. Stop following lukewarm believers, double-minded men, and false prophets to the leg of fire. <laughs> Again, who do we follow? <laughs> we follow Messiah. <laughs> I know that as I did, you would think that it's just okay to click a button, see this person pop up, and you may be attracted to this person or attracted to any type of lust of this world that you're not supposed to be attracted to. They could be a glutton and you follow them, literally. And so what does that mean? You are literally, you are literally following them on the way that they are on. So if they're a glutton and you're following a glutton, you cannot be unevenly yoked by unbelievers. There's going to be a way that you'll be, that you'll be unevenly yoked because you're looking at this person. And I had to understand this as well. Like, even at looking at somebody online, it's like you're with them every day. You know, like, if you're looking at, even me looking at workout guys, it's like I'm with this guy every day. So, if this guy is saying things that aren't true, I can be unevenly yoked by these things because, you know, you can let your guard down. You know, that's why I follow my son of the spirit with me, with me to take social media fast, YouTube fast. I actually want to do one right now, but I'm just doing work for our father and he let me know that I can't take my fast until I put these videos out and put this work in for him. So, I'm literally, you know, working on these things so that I can literally take a fast from this stuff because I literally want to take a break from this stuff. You know, father my son of the spirit knows. Honestly, I really want to take a break from YouTube forever. But I have things that I have to do on there, so, you know, I can't do that, you know, I'm just doing things for the people, but I really hate social media, you know, so I'm just going to let you guys know that for real, for real, but uh, yeah, man, I follow my son on the spirit with us, and I got to do these things for my son as well, like I spoke about under the videos, you know, and just just to show, because our father was me to show my testimony, you know, even my up-to-date testimony with you all, so that's what I'm doing, you know. Like, again, I said I hate social media, but I love my father, my son, and the spirit. And I, I really love doing his work, and I, and I love that I can communicate with people that are nowhere near me. I think that's really cool, and I think that's really a blessing. But it's just sad because it's just just how social media works. It's just It just disgusts me. It just disgusts me. But, yeah, following somebody or literally following, following them on the way that they are. Messiah sat with sinners so that he could get them on the path to lead them and work on healing them and to get a better understanding of us. And he told us to do even greater works than him. So ask yourself, what do you want to follow? And how much time do you want to spend following them? That's why in the last videos we talked about why entertainment is a distraction and me being used as a testimony for that. Like I'm doing my readings, I'm doing my studying, but then after that, I'm using time to watch anime and look up different games I can play, you know, things like that on, on my phone and just using using my phone for dumb things. And it's like thinking about all the time that I could have been using to search out our Father, Messiah, Holy Spirit more. I was using this time to just waste time, you know, and and getting caught up in 
confusion, you know, Babylon, you know, which we want to get out of confusion. We want to come out of her. We want to, we want to not be confused and we, we don't want to, we don't want to be unevenly yoked by unbelievers and we don't want to be false. That's not going to lead us to the truth. That's not going to lead us to understanding. People got to understand that because you grew up in this generation that this the devil, he's trying to make you think that this stuff is okay. You know, it's the unholy spirit. You have to think about why are there even people who create video games? Like, how are video? You have to really ask yourself who and what, like, how is this helping? This is not helping. There's literally video game disorder. People are literally getting addicted to video games that they're still creating and they're making them even more addicting than before. Like, just because that it's a job for some people and it may be beneficial and you feel like this is the direction that everything's going and so that just makes it okay because this is just the direction that everything's going like how they just revolutionized everything and how farmers are losing jobs but video game creators are getting more jobs like you have to understand what that really sounds like you have to understand what's really going on here so farmers are losing jobs because they're losing land but video games but but, but people have another job opening with video games so what, 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 wait, what's actually helping farmers or video games like you have to really ask yourself what makes sense but i know many people are just think that the saddest part about this stuff and it really makes me want to cry is that people think that you're just so crazy for telling them this type of stuff like like you like they just think you're so crazy for telling them that a video game isn't doing nothing for you because you were raised on video games so you think that it's doing something for you like my father knows like it's it's just so sad to me, especially me growing up on this stuff, and I'm a living testimony of how that stuff didn't do nothing for me, family. Like, it was it was inserting a, the slot of our father in heaven, for real, for real. Like, if somebody would have told me about our father in heaven, bro, I would have never touched that stuff, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm playing some... This, this video game cannot talk back to me, bro. It doesn't know how I'm feeling in my heart. It doesn't know how I'm feeling in my mind. It doesn't know about none of that. Our Father in Heaven knows. That's why our Father led me to His Son. That's why our Father led me to His beautiful Spirit. And it's just amazing, man. Like, I just had a dream as well about me preparing myself for even being beheaded, you know, as it says that. And in the dream, I just was thinking about that. Like, um, I just was thinking about, you know, my death because it was like they were like running down on certain individuals and stuff like that. Like it was a lot going on in the dream. I can't even really explain it, but I just remember me thinking about that. And I'm just like, wow, I'm like, they may behead me. You know, like we have to prepare ourselves for these things. Like, so how can you prepare yourself for these things when you're not fasting and you're not praying, you're not even doing any studies, you're not even trying to figure out any more deeper truths. Like, even as I was talking to the brother yesterday about Babylon, I asked our father, I was, I was like, I got to be studied up on this stuff. Like, like I want to know everything about everything there is to know down here that I can know. And I want to figure it all out so that I could tell others, number one, and just so that I am clear on all of this stuff as well, especially when they bring me up into the synagogue. And, you know, as the scriptures say, if that's will to be one of us, you know, because there's different things that's going to happen to, you know, the all of us, you know, that are true, you know, some in jail, some just beheaded, some we're just going to get brought up to the congregations and we need to just let the Holy Spirit flow and in truth and understanding and we need to come correct. You feel me? So that's what we got to prepare ourselves for. And that's we have to literally raise our children up for that. Like if you're not training your child up in a correct way, like you have to understand that this stuff is real. Like even me, just like it's like, yo, these past like few days, I've been getting revelations. Like it's like I'm just been up on the bed and I'm just like. Father, you're so real. I'm like, I really have your Holy Spirit inside of my body. I was not thinking like this. I was not thinking like this at all. I was not fasting. These things were far from me. Like, I literally feel different. I look different. I'm talking different, more confident. I was, I was really timid inside, especially playing video games and all of that type stuff. Then I ended up becoming a bully because I got bullied. You know, many things happened to me that I, that I didn't feel like this. Like I, like, I had hate in my heart. I had, I, had a, I had a barrier covering up my heart. It was stony. Like, you know, e even when I was in the body still learning things, you know, because I was dealing with distractions, still holding jealousy and envy and hate in my heart because I didn't fully understand who I was and I didn't fully understand my man my mantle. So I still had double-mindedness within me because of the things that I was watching and getting unevenly yoked by unbelievers, you know, and many, many, many of these things because it's about who I was following, you feel me? I wasn't following our Father, Messiah, and Holy Spirit, and they let me know that for real, for real. 
through other willing vessels and just through them through them themselves, through dreams, visions in the night, and them just speaking to me for real. But family, understand that this stuff is real. Understand that this stuff is true. You got to prepare yourself. Ask yourself, are you ready for them to behead you? Like how they beheaded our brothers, beheaded yo and on. Are you ready to be stoned if they stone you? Are you ready to be shot? You know, are you ready to get injected? They may inject some of us. They may put us into the, into the electric chair. Are you ready for that stuff? Ask yourself. Scriptures do say if you overcome, you're going to feel it. But you got to overcome that mentally, physically, spiritually, crying out to our Father in these moments. You know, mentally sound in these moments, physically sound in these moments. So you're prepared if they put you through physical labor, as they did even when we were slaves, you know, some of us. At the, in like in the previous day and age when they had us carrying things and doing labor work, you know, what if you're doing labor work for the devil for 10 days straight before you go? You know, ask yourself, are you, are you physically prepared for this stuff? Are you prepared for this stuff? There's other things to be worried about. And if you don't think that there's other things to be worried about, like even now with COVID and all of this type of stuff that's going on. So many of these people aren't taking care of themselves, but then, they're, but then they're worried about getting a shot. They're worried about getting a vaccine. So you're worried about getting a vaccine and you're worried about getting a shot, but you're not... You're not even waking up earlier to go to go sit in here to go get yourself together. You're running to go get a shot and you're running to go get a vaccine. You got to ask yourself, like, what are you living for? Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, accept the calling. Like, Father, my son, Holy Spirit knows. Even for myself and for others, I've literally seen many are called and few are chosen as I was being called and have not like I didn't answer the phone, you know, like answering and putting it back down. Like I remember back in 2017 how real this was for me and how I should have accepted my mantle back then and how I didn't and how I'm so sh sad and ashamed because I went and got unevenly yoked by unbelievers listening to, listening to other people and just getting caught back up into this w wicked world system, this evil world system, you know, and backsliding as it said that this is this last wicked generation and that's like the main thing that that, that, that that's gonna happen, you know? Backsliding, 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 backsliding back into my own vomit. You know, like our father in heaven told me back when I was about to kill myself in 2017 that he had something for me. And what he had for me was the kingdom of heaven. And me, and me and for me to hop on a righteous path and then kept, keep hopping off, on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off, being double-minded, going back and forth. Like, I'm just like, father, you could have just been killed me. And he didn't. Even as I was listening and laying on my bed, as the scriptures was playing throughout the night, Jeremiah, and he said, Jeremiah said, and this is even like how I feel with YouTube and these things, like me being like, man, I just want to put this stuff down. Jeremiah said, I just like a burning passion inside of me. He said, I can't stop talking about our Father in heaven. I can't stop talking about the truths of this world. I feel it inside of my heart. I feel it inside of my heart. It's a passion. If you don't have this passion, I don't know. It says Messiah's eyes is like a flaming fire, flames of fire, you know, like this is this is a burning passion for this stuff. Like if you don't have that burning passion for this stuff, then I don't know, you know, it's like, it's like, I don't even know if you ever like, cause I know for me, it's sad that a lot of this stuff is rigged for real, for real. So it's like, even me thinking about this now, I'm like, this is sad. But like, even I used to watch like um, NBA, like world champions and stuff like that, like getting all caught up in like that type stuff. And I remember just looking at the videos, like after they won the championship and just how hungry they were talking about it, which is sad because that stuff was great. But just just saying that because, well, I, I can say for myself, looking at my own sports teams, like in, when I was in high school and stuff and just seeing the hunger of my teammates that they really want it, you know, like they, they want that stuff bad, you know, you gotta, this, you, gotta, you gotta have that hunger, you know, you gotta want this stuff. You gotta want to grow, you know? You have to fast, you really have to pray, you have to study. Like our brother said, the Holy Spirit put it on his heart to say, we gotta be detectives for this stuff. And I felt that even even me coming across the, uh, the more Babylonian studies and just trying to figure this stuff out or just speaking about it to brothers. And I'm just like, I'm like, all right, so yeah, like we're detectives, bro. We gotta know this word in and out. We gotta know everything about the truth to this life. Like there is no time to waste. What time do we have to waste? You know, we have to prepare ourselves in every single type of way and prepare our children as well. My child may see me, may see me get beheaded on live TV. My child may see me get yanked up and beat up and took in a jail in front of his face. I got to prepare him for that. If I'm not preparing him for that and I'm trying to put him into his own world, sadly before and me and my wife finally put down all of this technology, like as we're watching TV and all of that Philly stuff, we watched the show called Wanda's Vision. And my wife also let me know, this is sad, but she just let me know that Sadly, this is just 
what my dad was doing. And what, what, what they did on the show, and this is what many other parents are doing, so I'm not just targeting my dad, I love my dad, but this is what he did, and this is what many other parents are doing. As I was speaking to him about why I stopped doing Christmas, and he literally told me he didn't want to get the children involved in that. As in, you're not already getting the children involved in technology and video games and movies and all this other Babylonian stuff. You already got the children involved because you brought us all out here into this wicked world. You know, like as you went into my mom and then we were conceived, you brought us out here. We're already involved in this. So there is no, there is no, you don't want to get them involved. We are already involved. We're already out here. This is already live action. This ain't no, this ain't no replays either. You know, it's live action. It's right now. It's playing and it's going. You feel me? But yeah, so in the show Wanda's Vision, she basically took and it's sad, Father Masana's friend, please forgive us. There's a lot of witchcraft and all this type of stuff going on in the show. It's disgusting. I mean, but she literally used her powers to create a whole, like, town. Like, like literally, literally brainwashed people. You know, like they're doing right now. And putting people into the... And she got people thinking that they're this type of person. You know, that they're, that they're this type of way. And, you know, even the guy that she was with died. She brought him back to life. And her brother... And it's crazy because her brother, and this is, I was like, wow, this is really how I feel. Because her brother ran up to her and her brother was already dead. She basically brought him back to life. And when she saw him, like, the second time, his whole body was dead. You know, like, he was dead, but talking like, hey, this is what you want, right? This is what you want, right? And it's sad because I was like, wow, this is, like, how I feel when I talk to even some of my brothers now. And I ask that they just repent. It's like I'm looking at them and they're, they're just literally dead. And I'm like, brother, like, you're dead. Like, bro, you're dead. Like. Like, you're literally dead, bro. Like, look at yourself. You're dead, you know? And it's like, that stuff is sad, you know? Like, I just I just want them to go get revived, you know? Like, literally, you know? And I want them to go and be true, you know, get revived here, you know, in the flesh while you're still here and get brought back to, you know, this reality and understand that, hey, on, on, the, on the path to the kingdom of heaven, we're revived because we're on the mission to get revived, you feel me? So if you think as though you're revived now, you will for sure be revived, you know, during the resurrection because that's the goal, that's what we're going for. But yeah, it's like, you know, you can't put people into your own vision of what you see this world as when this world already has a vision. You know, it's a wicked world, you know, and this this world has to be portrayed as it is, as it is so that we can all take these things as what they are. You feel me? But yeah, Matthew 419, it's the New International Version. Come follow me, Messiah said, and I will send you out to fish for people. Don't get this confused, people. We are all fishing to lead people to the kingdom of heaven. Like I see some people looking at some different interpretations. I watched the video, people coming at the Messiah saying that they were gay or whatever. And I was like, and this was a minute ago. I'm like, come on, man. Like, you, you think the Messiah is gay because he said to fish for people, fish for men. I'm like, man, these guys are full of the unholy spirit, man. Like, this is sad for real. Like, if you think the Messiah is gay, well, you just condemn yourself. And I just pray that those brothers repent that we're saying that. I mean, so Mark 2, 13 through 17, especially back then because I'm like, okay, so, because I think the video that I was watching was basically people debunking that, you know, the Messiah was real and that all this stuff was real in the New Testament. So I'm like, okay, so this is just double-mindedness at its finest. So you believe that they weren't gay? I don't, because I don't believe that they're gay, but for whoever thinks that Messiah and them were gay because they were doing that, do you, do you not think Moshe and all of them were gay when they were kissing on each other and all that stuff? Like siblings and family members? It was the olden times, and first of all, things were different. And if you love somebody, that's why even in the scripture say, greet the brothers and sisters would have set up our kiss. I love the brothers and sisters, and I would love to kiss them for real, for real. But many people wouldn't understand that. They'll be, oh, he's gay, he's gay, he's gay. Nah, I know who my brothers and sisters are, and I love them. And yes, I would love to kiss them. I would love to kiss my brothers and sisters. I love them for real, for real. Especially the ones that are being true and following this way. They know what it feels like to pick up their mantles and actually carry it. Because whoever is saying that, whoever is thinking that, you have not picked up your mantle. That thing is over there collecting dust. You don't know what it feels like to go fast and pray, no food, no water, continually throughout the weeks and throughout the months and throughout the years, for real, for real. Yeah, that's different, for real. Because this is about endurance, for real, for real which I'm working on myself. My father, Messiah, Holy Spirit tells me about that every day. Son, endurance, 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 endurance. Push it, even with this workout stuff physically. I gotta get the endurance up. I gotta go harder. I gotta go harder. Father, Messiah, Holy Spirit let me know that I was pushing it spiritually 100%, but then I laid off on the physical. I was only pushing my physical 75%, and I gotta stay up on the mental. Everything gotta be 100. 100, 100, 100. Like, let's go. So this is Mark 2, 13, 17. Messiah calls Levi and eats with sinners. 
Once again, Messiah went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to him, and he began to teach them. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Messiah told him, and Levi got up and followed him. While Messiah was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Messiah said to them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor. But the sick, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repent. Amen. So now, right here, we have Yohanan John 14 12 through 31. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he shall do also, and, and greater works than these he shall do, because I got, because I go to my Father, and whatever you ask in my name, that I shall do, in order that the Father might be esteemed in the Son. If you ask whatever in my name, I shall do it. If you love me, you shall guard my commands, and I shall ask the Father, and he shall give you another helper, to stay with you forever, the Spirit of the truth, whom the world is un whom the world is unable to receive because it does not see him or know him. But you know him, for he stays with you and shall be in you. I shall not leave you orphans. I am coming to you yet a little while, and the world no longer sees me. But you shall see me because I live, and you shall live. And that day you shall know that I am, I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who possesses my commands and guards them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me shall be loved by my Father, and I shall love him and manifest myself to him. I mean, Yehuda, not the one from Kiriah, said to him, Master, what has come about that you are about to manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Yehushua answered him, If anyone loves me, he shall guard my word, and my father shall love him, and we shall come to him and make our stay with him. He who does not love me does not guard my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but of the Father who sent me. These words I have spoken to you while I still with you, but the Helper, the set-apart Spirit, whom the Father shall send in my name, he shall teach you all and remind you of all that I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled. Troubled, neither let it be afraid. You heard that I said to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you did love me, you would have rejoiced that I said, I am going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, that when it does take place, you shall believe. I shall no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he possesses none at all in me. As we talked about in the previous video, it says he possesses none at all in me. But in order for the world to know that I love the Father, and that, and that as the Father commanded me, so I am doing, rise up, let us go from here. Rise up, let us work. May our Father Messiah and Holy Spirit be with us. I pray that this video was edifying for you. It definitely was edifying for me. Allowing the Holy Spirit to just flow. I love you all, family. May our Father Messiah and Holy Spirit be with us. Peace and love. Shalom, shalom. Amen.